Hello, and welcome to Creative Photoshop. My name is John Ruder. Today we're going to explore a technique called Layer Styles Blending. It's a great way to blend two different images into a composite, and maybe one that you haven't tried before. To begin, let's have two images open on our screen, and I'm going to drag the Santa Fe doorway on top of the Santa Fe sky image here, holding the shift key as I move it to center the image. I'm going to close the original doorway image, and then enlarge our view so we can get a better view of what we're doing here. Let's just check our layers real quick to make sure we have our doorway over the sky, which is the order that we want. Now in exploring a technique like this, I will often check the opacity of the top layer first, just to sort of see what kind of blend possibilities that I have between the two images. In this case, my Santa Fe sky has some beautiful clouds that I'd like to have come through the doorway image, and also have the doorway sort of give way to the blue sky. Let's return our opacity to 100%. And before we move on, let's explore some other ways to blend images, such as the blend modes. I've chosen the light and blend mode here, which the result of the top layer and bottom layer will, re will result in a lighter image, sort of ignoring some of the darker tones. Its opposite would be the darken blend mode, which will result in a darker image, ignoring many of the lighter tones. And related to darken is the multiply blend mode, which if you use an analogy of two transparencies on a light table together, one over the top of the other, it will multiply the densities of your image, resulting also in a darker image. Its opposite would be the screen blending mode, and if we follow that slide analogy, if we have two slides and projectors side by side projecting onto the same screen, the end result would be a lighter image as well. And finally, the difference blend mode is a kind of unique one. It looks at the tones in each of the three channels and outputs the difference of the top layer and bottom layer. It's always reminded me of color infrared or cross-processing effects that you get with uh, transparency film. So we'll return now to our normal blend mode. And what we're going to do now is access the Layer Styles dialog box by double-clicking on the doorway layer in our Layers palette. And as you can see, it's sort of a one-stop shopping for layer needs. We've got our blending modes available to us. We also have our opacity that we had on the Layers palette, also available here. But we're going to look down below where it says Blend If Gray. And a lot of people might avoid this thinking it's a for grayscale images, but the gray actually refers to a composite channel. And if we look at the slider over here at the zero end, and I start to move that away, you can see underneath that image is giving way. Let's actually move this over so we can see a better view of what we're getting. The real power of this tool, however, lies when you split the sliders. And you do that by holding the Option or Alt key. And as we do, you can see we get a much more gradual transition of the pixels giving way to the bottom image. And conversely, if I go to my underlying sliders, this allows me to push pixels up from underneath. And again, I'm going to split the slider with my Option or Alt key, giving us the very subtle transparency as we move the clouds into the gate image. So I'll often play with these sliders, tweak both back and forth. And when I'm done, I'm going to close this dialog box. Now, this is not a permanent effect, which is part of the beauty of the process. And any time I want to go back and undo them, I can. If there's any drawback to the process is that it's arbitrary in the pixels that it picks. So if I wanted to, say, not have these images come from the bottom and the top of the image, there is a way to get around that. And that's to have local control over the process. And to do this, we're going to duplicate our gateway layer and then bring it down underneath the sky image. You can see right now I'm not able to do that because this is a background layer and locked. So if I simply double click on the layer, and in this case I'm going to rename it sky, this also gives me the layer having the attributes of a normal layer. And now I can bring the, the gateway image underneath the sky. But before I continue, what I need to do is actually double click on the copy of the image and undo the slider positions that we had done before, because when I duplicated this layer, we also duplicated this. And we want this to be a fully opaque layer for this to work. Now we go back to the sky layer. I click on it and go down to the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers palette. And I have a blank layer mask. So now I go to get my paintbrush. I want to make sure that my black is my foreground color. And we're going to choose about 30% opacity. And when I paint in my image now on the sky in the mask, what I'm doing is removing the view of the clouds that came through the layer styles blend. And let me just go around and remove some of the clouds that I don't want to have in here. 
We'll finish up down below. To get a better sense of what we're doing when we're painting with the color gray or black, is take a look at our layer mask itself. If I option or alt click on it, it'll bring it into screen view, and you can see quite clearly where we have eliminated some of our view of the pixels. So that's our technique for today, layer styles blending. I think you'll find it's a very unique way to create image composites. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Creative Photoshop, and I invite you to visit my website, www.johnruder.com, to see examples of my work and also the workshops that I offer in Photoshop around the country. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.